In this video, I will be solving multiple static equilibrium problems. In this problem, we are asked a 41 kilogram mass is suspended by two ropes, T1 and T2, as shown in the diagram below. So these are the ropes, T1 and T2, and they are suspended at angles of 64 degrees to the vertical here and 47 degrees to the horizontal right here and this mass is suspended between them. It is a 41 kilogram mass. So we are first asked, what is the tension in each rope? So the first thing that we want to do is write a free body diagram of this picture. Okay, so um, the easiest way to do this is to draw a horizontal line and then draw your ropes just like they are in the picture um, at similar angles. That way it's easier to picture this problem. So we have the weight of the object right here going downwards. We have the tension of this rope going that way and the tension of this rope going that way. T1, T2, and the weight. So the first thing we want to do is we want to convert this kilograms into newtons. So we know that weight is equal to mass times gravity. So the mass of this object is 41 kilograms. And we want to multiply that by gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So Multiply that together, it gives 402 newtons. So the weight of the um, crate here is 402 newtons. Now what we want to do is solve for the angles right here and right here so the problem becomes easier to do. So we want to solve for T2 first, this angle right here. We can draw another drawing. Uh, a triangle like so of this right here so we're drawing we're imitating this triangle right here so this is T2 and this angle right here we know is 64 degrees because of the picture and since it this is a right triangle this is 90 degrees and we know that a triangle a right triangle always has to equal 180 degrees this angle right here has to be equal to 26 degrees. So knowing this, we can say that this angle right here in our drawing is 26 degrees because we draw, we drew our triangle right here. So if we want to determine the angle right here for T1, we do the same thing. We draw another triangle. So like this, a right triangle that is. Oops. Uh, like that. Okay, so this is T1. We're just drawing this triangle right here. But this time, we are given the angle right here. This is 47 degrees. So this other triangle that's above this triangle that we've written here, this angle is 47 degrees. This is 90. And it has to be equal to 180 degrees. So this angle right here is equal to 43 degrees. So, knowing this, we can say that this is a right, this is a 90 degree angle from here to here, so this has to be equal to 43 degrees, and this has to be equal to 47 degrees, because this is 90 degrees. So, from all this, what we, what we need from all this is that this angle right here is this angle right here, and that it's 47 degrees. Another way you could have looked at it is this is a similar triangle, so 47 degrees here, it has to be equal to 40, 47 degrees has to be equal right here. Okay, so now that we've determined that angle, we can determine the uh, components of the this problem. So let's choose a different color for this. So we know um, that there is an up component, a vertical component, which I'll draw right here. A vertical component, 
to this tension, and there's a vertical component to this tension. And the vertical component for this, for the second tension right here, it is going to be equal to T2 times sine of 26 degrees. So this right here, this up component, this vertical component, is going upwards, is T2 times sine 26 degrees. So whatever this tension is, it's multiplied by sine of 26 degrees. And for this one, this component, it is T1 multiplied by sine of 47 degrees. So the vertical component here, going upwards, is T1 multiplied by sine of 47 degrees. Okay. So now that we know that, we can write an equation for this. We can write that the sum of the forces in the uh, y direction, so up and down, is equal to T1 sine 47 degrees plus T2 sine 26 degrees minus 402 newtons is equal to zero. So we can write this because this upward component right here and this upward component right here is equal to this downward component right here, which is 402 newtons. So we can write it like this. So when we add all of these together, these, these three components together, it has to be equal to zero because this these ropes are supporting this um, weight. If these ropes couldn't support it, then it wouldn't be equal to zero. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to just rearrange this equation. So we can write T1 sine 47 degrees plus T2 sine 26 degrees is equal to 402 newtons because this upward component and this upward component is equal to this downward component. Okay, but the problem with this is we can, now we can't solve for T1 or T2 because we have two variables here. So we need to rearrange this equation so that we only have one variable so we can solve for one tension. So the way that we do that is we do the sum of the forces in the x direction. So from left to right. So um, the first force, the actually I should draw this out. So the, the component in the right direction for T2, because it has an upward component and a component to the right, because that's how this vector is shown. So this uh, component that's going to the right is T, I'll just try using a different color, T2 cos 26 degrees. So use the same angle, but it's, tw it's um, cos instead of sine because it's in the x direction right here. And for T1, we do the same thing. Oops, let's go back to that green color. Um, we have T1 cos 47 degrees right here. So that's the, com the um, x component of this tension. So this time, these two tensions are equal to one another because they're the only uh, tensions in this whole problem, the only components that are in the right, that are in the x direction. Everything else is upwards or like sideways right here. So what we can write is T1 cos 47 degrees minus T2 cos 26 degrees has to be equal to zero. So the sum of these forces in the x direction have to be equal to zero. So now what we can do is we can solve for one of these uh, tensions. Sorry, actually we should rewrite this and write T1 cos 47 degrees is equal to T2 cos 26 degrees. So I just shifted this tension over to the right hand side over here. Okay, so now we can divide one side by um, one of the angles. So we will solve for T1. So we divide 
this side by cos 47 degrees. We divide this side by cos 47 degrees. And what we are left with is T1 equals T2, and then cos 26 divided by cos 47 degrees is equal to 1.317. Now that we've done that, we can use this right here and plug it into this equation that we had originally. So that way we will have this whole equation just in terms of T2. So what that'll look like, it'll look like this. It'll look like T2, 1.3, oops, 1.317 times that sine of 47 degrees, because all we're doing is replacing this T1 by T2 one, times 1.317. So it's plus T2 sine 26 degrees equals 402 newtons. So now all we have to do is add this together and then we can solve for T2. So when we add this together, we get T2 uh, 1.4 times 1, T2 times 1.4 is equal to 402 newtons. And all I did there was I multiplied 1.317 times sine of 47 degrees, and then I added that, whatever that number was, I added that number to sine of 26 degrees to give me 1.4 here. So now all we do is we solve for T2 by dividing 402 by 1.4, and we get 287 newtons. So the tension in the second rope right here, T2, is equal to 287 newtons. And to determine the tension in the other rope right here, all we do is we plug it into this equation right here. So T1 is equal to 287 times 1.317. So T1 is equal to 378 newtons. And that's the answer for the tension in the first rope. And this is the answer for the tension in the second rope right here. Okay, let's do another example. Just give me a second to draw it, and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've drawn the picture, we can start the problem. So, this is a picture of a floodlight, this red thing, being suspended by two cables. And we are given the tension in one of the cables. It is 140 newtons as this says. And we don't have the tension of the other cable, but we do have the angles. So the first question asks, what is the tension in the other cable? So we're looking for a T. We're looking for T here. So the first thing that we can do is draw another free body diagram. So I'll draw one of those real quickly here. And we can start the problem. So those are the cables, there's the weight, so the weight right here, which is equal to mass times gravity, which we don't have, and then we have the tension here, of this one is 140 newtons, and we don't have the tension of this, it's just T. The angles here we do know because 60 degrees here, we know that the angle right here 60 degrees. So these are similar triangles. Same thing with this angle. 40 degrees here. We know this is 40 degrees here. Okay, now that we've done that, we can solve this problem. So we don't have any, we don't have the tension here. So what we can do is we can solve for the components in the x direction. So just these, oops, just these components. Man, I'm terrible at drawing. These two components. So we know this one is 140 times 140 newtons. 
times cos 60 degrees. And this one right here is T times cos of 40 degrees. Now that we know that, we can pretty much solve this problem. So, so the sum of the forces, oops, so the sum of the forces, I'll write it down here. Sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to T cos 40 degrees minus 140 times cos of 60 degrees is equal to zero. So just like the last problem, it's equal to zero because this is in static equilibrium. It's not moving, it's being held. So we solve for T here. We put 140 cos 60 degrees on one side. Solve for T by dividing 140 cos 60 by cos of 40. This gives us a tension of of 91 newtons. So that's the answer for question A. For the second part of this question, it asks, what is the mass of the floodlight? So let's do that next. So let's first write out the components in the y direction because we will need that for this question. So the components y direction for these two tensions are 140 times 60 or 140 times sine of 60 and this one right here is t times sine of 40 degrees and we know what t is it's 91 so we can write 91 times sine of 40 degrees so now we come back to this question. We can write that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to 140 sine of 60 plus 91 sine of 40 minus w equals 0. So these two components right here, this one right here, and this one right here is equal to the weight of this floodlight. So the up forces are equal to the down forces. So this one and this one equals this one right here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for W because we're looking for the weight or mass of the floodlight. So let's solve for W. So what we do is we isolate W on one side and we add all of this together which gives us 179.7 so all I did here I just skipped some steps is all you do is you multiply this together and you add it to this multiplied together and I'll give this so this is in Newton's so this is the weight and it asks for the mass of the floodlight so to determine the mass we know that weight right here equal to mg so we can say mg equals 179.7 and we know what gravity is gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared so if we divide 179.7 by 9.8 we're left with a mass of 18 kilograms and that is the answer for part B of this question.